here and on this video we are going to go back to the basics and talk about autophagy. Let's go back to the basics. So here's what you need to know about autophagy. That one of the things that we are now uncovering about the human body is that we have this whole repair state that kicks in when we're not eating. And autophagy is one of those repair mechanisms. When autophagy first came out, it actually made, was made popular in 2015 by Dr. Osumi. He's a Japanese scientist who had been studying autophagy for many years. And he discovered that when cells don't get food, so when it doesn't sense that the glucose, that your blood sugar is going up, that there is a mechanism that turns on the efficiency of that cell. And that mechanism is called autophagy. And autophagy is really the way that the cell can start to become more efficient. It is, it is like the internal intelligence inside the cell. Now, here's what's so fascinating to me about autophagy. There are some hacks to autophagy. There are some little tricks to getting into autophagy. But really what autophagy is there for is to make you stronger. So think about it like this, a little bit of stress in our lives will make us go within and become a stronger, more hopefully compassionate, uh, more wise human being. Well, the same thing when you take food out of the equation, our cells start to kick in an intelligence that tells the cell to be better. And it does this by looking around the cell and saying, gosh, you know what? There's some bad bacteria in here. There's some viruses in here. There's some things inside this cell that are not serving this cell. So I'm going to just clean that up. It will spit these bacteria and bacteria out. It will stop the replication of bacteria. It will go in and repair mitochondria that we need to make energy. It will repair proteins. So it's a, like the, the most basic idea around autophagy is it's like you walked into a dark room and you turned on the lights. And when the lights got turned on, all of a sudden you could see what in the room needs to be cleaned up. That's what autophagy is doing. So you need to go into these states of autophagy, but you can't necessarily get autophagy through eating. If you're eating breakfast, if you're eating all day, if, you, if you're still in the mindset of counting calories or that you need to eat six meals a day to lose weight, you're not even touching the, the beginning to touch this intelligence that wants to heal you. So the basic premise around autophagy is yes, it is detoxifying, it is self-healing, it is a mechanism that you were born with, you don't have to pay any money for. You just need to fast a certain period of time so that you can tap into this intelligence. But what I wanted you to understand today is that it's this brilliance that you were born with. It is the miracle that you already came programmed with. You've just been over here eating all day because that's what the world has taught us is eat all day and you'll speed up your metabolism, that you never got a, a true sense or you never got the true, true idea behind autophagy and understood what autophagy could be so that it works in your favor. Now, the other thing I want you to know that's pivotal to autophagy, is that when you start to turn on this intelligence with fasting, is the intelligence may look around the cell, just like you might walk into a dark room and turn on the light and go, whoa, there is, everything in here is just junk. I need to get rid of all of the junk. The same thing can happen with autophagy, that sometimes you turn on this internal healing mechanism and the cell goes, this is not a good cell. This is a bum cell. I'm going to kill this cell. And it will create cell death. This is called apoptosis. It is a beautiful thing. If the intelligence thinks that this cell is malfunctioning, you do not want that cell to malfunction and replicate. This is how things like cancer starts. This is how aging progresses. So autophagy is pivotal for cellular repair. It's pivotal for your intelligence to be able to understand if it's a healthy cell that needs to be killed or if it's a cell that they could just clean up and it could thrive.
Okay, let's talk about autophagy fasting. So there are some very specific parameters. The first, you guys have probably heard me talk about this idea that we have these switches that turn on. The longer you fast, the more you turn these switches on. And I actually think of autophagy as more like a dimmer switch. So autophagy starts to kick in around 17 hours. And so that's when you're like a dimmer switch in a room, you're slowly turning up the light, you're slowly turning up autophagy around 17 hours of fasting. Now, if you stay fasting, the science shows that between 17 and 72 hours, you will get maximum autophagy. Many people believe 72 hours, that three-day water fast will give you the best autophagy effect possible. And a lot of people believe, just like I was explaining, that it's just a dimmer switch that just gets brighter and brighter as you move closer to 72. So 20 hours has more autophagy than 17. 36 hours has more autophagy than 17. The more you fast, the more you're gonna build up this autophagy effect. Now there are other key principles to autophagy other than fasting that we cannot ignore. So one of those, and I learned this from Naomi Whittle, she uh, did a Resetter podcast with me all on autophagy, so go to iTunes and check out the Resetter podcast. And she taught me a hack for autophagy fasting that I absolutely love and many of you have tried. And the hack is this, you go 17 hours of fasting and then at 17 hours you break your fast with fat. Why would you wanna break your fast with fat? And that's because fat will not spike your blood sugar, typically. Fat will keep your blood sugar level and it will allow your blood sugar in some cases to even drop. If your blood sugar doesn't go up, then technically you are not being pulled out of a state of autophagy. So the first thing to get into autophagy is you wanna go 17 hours of fasting. The second is when you actually do break your fast, break it with fat, an avocado, uh, MCT oil, uh, any grass-fed dairy that doesn't like butter or ghee that doesn't have a lot of protein in it. You're literally just, or avocado, I, I do a lot of when I autophagy fast, I do a lot of avocado where you're just taking like a scoop or a sampling of those foods so that you keep your blood sugar even and it will allow you to fast longer. So if you're struggling to go 17 hours, this is a key hack because if you eat that fat, it doesn't raise your blood sugar, doesn't pull you out of autophagy, and you can technically keep fasting. Second key, key food tip that I wanna give you on autophagy is if you are continuing your autophagy fasting after you broke your fast, if you open your window up, your eating window up, and you keep your protein under 20 grams, you're still technically in autophagy. Break your fast with fat, and then when you eat, you're gonna keep your protein under 20 grams. You can do animal protein if you eat animal protein. We're not in autophagy, we don't look at carbs as much as we look at that protein. Now, I like you to keep your carbs under 50 net carbs, but the key is 20 grams of protein. That is the key. Let's talk about food and autophagy. Now, I'm gonna go big level here for a moment. When, remember that autophagy is your body's ability to self-heal. That is why we love autophagy because it is the body turning within and saying, okay, these cells need to clean up. And when we look at different levels of autophagy, what I want you to realize is that when I show you the food autophagy and how we can stimulate autophagy through food, it is not the same power as like fasting for 17 hours. The number one way to stimulate autophagy is through fasting and that starts at 17 hours and each hour past 17 hours, you're getting more and more autophagy. It's like a dimmer switch. You turn the dimmer switch on, when you get to 72 hours, it's like boom, maximum of autophagy. So what I'm gonna show you here are some ways that when we, some of the, these things we can do in our fasting window and some we may wanna do out after our fasting window. But these are a little lower level autophagy stimulators, but they're great when we start to stack them together and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here we go. Okay, first 
autophagy stimulating product out there is coffee. Hallelujah. For those of you that are coffee drinkers, we love coffee and it is the caffeine in the coffee that will make a difference in stimulating autophagy. A lot of you have asked me, what about decaf? So black clean coffee is amazing for stimulating autophagy. The next a drink down from that is green tea. And then the one down from that is Bergamot, which you can find in Earl Grey. So those three, you drink them in your fasting window and you're enhancing the autophagy effect you're getting from fasting. Now, if you want to, the second category that I want to talk about is oils. And there are two oils that will help you with autophagy. The first is our favorite MCT oil. We love MCT oil. Um, and you're going to put that together with some clean coffee. And now in your fasting window, and now we're, we're, not, we're getting ketones, we're stimulating a deeper sense of autophagy, we're cleaning ourselves up in a deeper way. So beautiful way to pair these two together. Now, there is some interesting science showing that extra virgin olive oil also stimulates autophagy. Okay, next category of autophagy stimulating yummy foods is our berries. But two berries in particular, blueberries and strawberries. And check this out. This, this is like divine intervention because this morning in preparation for this video, I went to my farmer's market to get some berries. And my local farmer, look at this cool berry he had. It is, I hope you all can see this. It is a heart berry. Love it. So I would think that if you could find a heart berry, there may even be more autophagy inside this thing, or this thing may stimulate more autophagy inside you. So just thinking. But berries, blueberries, and strawberries are great for stimulating autophagy. Next category, the magic mushroom. Mushrooms of all kinds are getting so much press right now. We are learning so much about the health benefits of mushroom. And we know there are two types of mushroom that stimulate autophagy. Uh, shaga and reishi mushrooms are known to really enhance that autophagy effect inside the cells. You can get, you can get reishi mushrooms and teas. You can probably get both of those in teas. Um, we're experimenting in our household. This is a lion's mane mushroom. We do a lot of that. Great for brain health, great nootropic. Um, so mushrooms, the world of mushrooms, the understanding of mushrooms when it comes to autophagy, we've just begun that discussion here on my channel, but know that those two that I mentioned really help um, keep you in that state of autophagy. Okay, third category, stay with me here. I know this has got a lot of lists, but I want you to get all this and I'm gonna show you at the end of this video how to put it all together. But the third category are spices. And there are a couple spices that really have a high um, uh, capability of enhancing autophagy. Turmeric, which it makes me think, you know all those great studies about turmeric out there, makes me wonder if part of the magic of turmeric, turmeric is because it does stimulate autophagy, which is self-healing, self-repairing. So it's, you know, if you go to one layer deeper on a lot of these studies, you start to see that what, fa what these tools are doing is just enhancing a natural process that's already in your body. Turmeric's not the healer. It stimulates the healer within you, which is so cool. So turmeric and ginger is great. One of my favorite things to do in my fasting window is ginger juice. Doesn't seem to mess up my blood sugar, but ginger juice. This one is made with ginger and lemon, and ginger juice can be one of those things that tips you into a deeper ketosis as well. That's pretty cool. So, and, and we get, the one we use is Ginger Lab. It's local to us, so I don't know if, you, if you'll be able to find that. Okay, next category of autophagy stimulating foods is fish. Now, with fish, there's a couple fish you're gonna want to lean into. Salmon is, has a great capability of stimulating autophagy. Black cod is another one. Sardines are another one. If you love sardines, more power to you. I just haven't been able to love them very much. I love salmon and I do love black cod. So it's the fattier fishes. They have more omega-3s and that is the part that helps to initiate autophagy and keep that self-repair going. Always with fish, you wanna make sure it's wild and that's coming from the cleanest sources possible. Um, so we'll let you do your research on that. This is a local one to us. Oh, two more categories I wanna talk about. Um, sulforaphane, 
This is a fancy nutrient that we find in cruciferous vegetables. I don't have any here to show you, but it's the broccolis, it's the Brussels sprouts and the broccoli sprouts that can enhance autophagy. And then we've got our supplements. Now, before I dive into the supplements, here's what I want you to know. Okay, you know how when you're trying to get in and out of fat burner, sugar burner, and sometimes you struggle? It might be that you have a metabolic blocker that's at play here. Want to know what those blockers are? Click on the link below and I'll take you straight to a giveaway and you can have my list of metabolic blockers. A lot of what I'm teaching you all here is how to use typical things you do on a day-to-day -day basis, like fasting. We're a worldwide audience. I know wherever you live, I can teach you fasting. When I come and I show you foods, yeah, I can, I can go into some of the specialty foods that I find here, I'm in, in California, um, but I wanna try to give you some things that you can find local to you, and I don't know what's local to you. So, but, um, but I like using food and fasting as the first healer. And then when we go into supplements, supplements should be exactly what the darn word says. It should be a supplement to your fasting regime and your good food regime. So you want to be able to use these supplements as a way to enhance autophagy after you've done the fasting and the food. And here are the best supplements for enhancing autophagy. The first is vitamin D. And the reason I'm bringing vitamin D up is because remember that vitamin D is like a boat that carries your hormones around your whole body. I, if your vitamin D levels are low, not only is your immune system low, but you don't have as many boats to carry all these hormones that you want to get into the cell. A really good example of that would be thyroid hormone. Do you know that you have receptor sites for your T3 thyroid hormone on every single cell in your body? Okay. Well, I could do a whole video showing you how to make sure that you're producing T3, but do you have the boats to carry them around your body? So I know that we love to see vitamin D levels up around 60 and 70 for hormonal health. So that's a little side one. And when you're looking at vitamin D, you wanna put it together with vitamin K. Those two together, especially when we're trying to stimulate autophagy. Other supplements that are great are berberine. Berberine balances blood sugar, so maybe that's why it helps. Spermidine, a lot of people got really into spermidine after Dave Asprey did a big podcast on spermidine. But I gotta tell you that I wouldn't go to the supplement first, I would go to food and fasting first. Um, we also know that things um, like resveratrol um, and acetyl L-carnitine are also great nutrients for stimulating autophagy. Okay. Now, how do we put this all together? Because it's just a bunch of words that I'm telling you until I show you how to put it into action. And here's what I would say. When we set out to do a longer fast, like 17 hours, remember at 17 hours, that is when autophagy begins. It's like a dimmer switch. So we're just slowly turning up autophagy and it'll keep going up every hour after 17. It'll get a little higher and a little bit more and a little bit more. At 72, it hits its peak and that's when you've got max autophagy just from fasting alone. Now, what if after you hit that 17 or as you're moving towards that 17 hour mark, you throw in your organic mold-free coffee and you put a little bit of MCT oil in it? Okay. Now we're, we're double stacking, triple stacking our autophagy behaviors. We're getting more autophagy than just fasting alone. Okay, then you go to break your fast. What if you break your fast with berries and maybe a little bit of fermented yogurt? That would be awesome. We're feeding the microbiome. We're enhancing autophagy even more. Okay, then what if you're in the afternoon before you have your big meal, you pour yourself some ginger juice? Okay, we're still in autophagy. Then you come to dinner. What if you did something where you put uh, uh, some salmon together with some mushrooms and you drizzle it with extra virgin olive oil and maybe put some ginger and turmeric on top as a seasoning. Just saying, now everything you've done that day has been geared towards autophagy. Remember when it comes to protein, we gotta keep our protein under 20 grams, um, otherwise it pulls you out of autophagy. So keeping specifically, we wanna keep that meal under 20 so it, pulls, it doesn't pull you out. You wanna dive into autophagy more, 
uh, I have a great video called uh, The Best Way to Extend a Fast and Boost Autophagy. So go check out that video. Once you click into this fasted state, somewhere in between eight to 12 hours, now the trick is, how do we stay there longer? 